Hello. I just realized I'm chewing gum, <laughs> which I do sometimes when I edit videos, which I just finished doing. So I figured well, I'm done editing for the main channel. Let me do a quick update for the alt channel about uh, books. Uh, in, because I just finished my second William Gibson book in a row, Virtual Light. So if you want to know what I thought about Neuromancer, you can go check out that previous book video. Um, a lot of you in the comments for that recommended I check out a neurological issue where you can't visualize stuff in your head. It's not that serious. I don't think, I don't have a handy, it's not like, uh, my prosopagnosia, where I have trouble recognizing faces. Even in that case, I'm not anywhere near the worst case <laughs> that, that doctors have seen. I can eventually learn faces. Um, and so, you know, with this, with not being able to visualize stuff, it's not a big deal. It's just, you know, it makes it difficult sometimes to read certain types of books and it made it difficult for me to read Neuromancer. And so I wasn't totally sure how I felt about Neuromancer at the end. It was a very difficult book. I ultimately um, did feel a bit rewarded about it, um, but I'm, I wasn't too sure. And so I wanted to do, um, I wanted to start on a completely different book afterwards to kind of clean the slate, but I didn't have time to get to the bookstore. I had to shop my spouse's bookshelves. <laughs> and uh, he recommended the Bridge series, William Gibson's uh, trilogy that starts with virtual light and involves people who have uh, set up encampments on the Bay Bridge. I live in the Bay Area. I travel across the Bay Br Bridge quite often. So I was like, all right, well, at least I have a starting point for this that's a little more grounded in reality. You know, I did have a starting point for Neuromancer in that I have seen The Matrix, but <laughs> this was a little, it felt a little more concrete to me. And you know what? It was. I actually really enjoyed this book. Um, so it's about a bike commuter. So, you know, I had a lot to grab a hold of in this book that I that I appreciated a bike commuter who gets wrapped up in some crimes. She uh, accidentally steals. Well, she purposely steals something that she doesn't realize is worth a lot more than she realizes. She doesn't realize is worth a lot more <laughs> than she thinks. And a um, security guard kind of cop guy who, is sent to collect her and the item she stole. And, you know, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot happening in it. Um, I found it really interesting. It's set in a, you know, mildly dystopian cyberpunk ish near future, um, which, you know, I guess that's William Gibson's thing, but unlike Neuromancer, this one was a lot more, in reality, it didn't all take place in what is essentially a video game, you know. Um, and there's a lot more character development in this. Uh, I I enjoyed <laughs> learning about the characters and seeing them interact with one another. And I thought that the variety of characters added to my understanding of the environment that they're living in, um, you know, why there are bike messengers and why there are virtual reality kind of goggles and what purpose all of these things serve, why there are people living on this bridge, um, what has happened to San Francisco compared to what has happened to some other cities like LA and Tokyo figure into it. So it's, it much like Neuromancer, it does take place in a, what I find to be a really interesting world where you are kind of thrown into it, but much more readable for me, a lot easier to understand 
to um, to kind of grok their slang. What a weird phrase. Uh, (laughs) And still, it still had that kind of poetry of Gibson's writing that I enjoyed in Neuromancer. But in Neuromancer, I would read a sentence and I would think, what a pretty sentence. (laughs) What a nicely written sentence. I wish I knew what it meant. And in this case, uh, there were a lot of pretty sentences that I understood. And a lot of turns of phrases that I enjoyed. So I recommend it. If you liked Neuromancer and uh, want something similar but different, um, yes. And if you didn't like Neuromancer's, uh, if Neuromancer was a bit confusing and nebulous for you like it was for me, but you still like the idea, the cyberpunkiness of it all, um, I think it's great. So, uh, I, I get why Neuromancer is the famous one. It's kind of set the standard, uh, for cyberpunk. But as an introduction to William Gibson and his worlds, virtual light, way better, in my opinion. So again, I did kind of want to go do something completely, read something completely different, but I was at the used bookstore the other day and I happened across a copy of Solaris by Stanislaw Lem. Is that his name? Um, I don't know. And, you know, I impulse bought it because I've, I've actually never seen either of the movies, but they've been on my list for a long time. So I thought, oh. I guess I'll read the book first. I love to read a book and then see the movie that is based on the book so I can compare. Uh, So that's next on my list. Speaking of, I still have not seen Knock at the Cabin, but I have appreciated you guys commenting on that review and letting me know what you thought of the movie. So a lot of like differing opinions about things and um, I'm not going to pay to see it in the m- movie theater, but uh, when it's streaming, uh, I will rent it and weigh in. Okay, that's it. Uh, glad you guys are enjoying these. I enjoy doing them because it helps me kind of process when I'm finished a book. That's why I wanted to hurry up and do this today because I'm just about to start on the next book and uh, I wanted to get these thoughts out first. So thank you for listening.